Hi, this is Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. And the topic for this week is Font Importer. And that is going to be a very popular topic for any person who has purchased embroidery fonts um, from a popular supplier. And a lot of times when we purchase an embroidery sort of letter style, what we really purchased was a folder or a zip file that included like the letter A as a design and the letter B, C. Every letter was an individual embroidery design and you were um, you know trying to use them by finding the letter F and then finding the letter O and so on and assembling them together and so the good news is there is a tool in Floriani that allows you to create a font from a, a letter style that you've purchased and so the tool you're looking for is in the tools drop down menu um, part way down where it says font importer and when you click on that font a window will open up which will allow you to create a new font or make edits to the ones that you've already made. And so notice that I can click here and it will show me all the fonts that I have added to my software that didn't come with the software. It doesn't show you the ones that came with the software, just the ones that you've added and you could select them and make edits to them. Or if you want to create a new one today, you click on the new font tool and give it a name. And so let's go ahead and call this one, um, Trev's uh, letters and say okay so now we have a new font Trev's letters who made it well if you want you can sign it put your name in there that way you always know who created the font um, you can set the default for things like the letter spacing or the word spacing or the height of the letters or it'll pick them up from the designs that you bring in. Now, um, notice I already have letters showing here, but you won't automatically have that. You'll need to decide what folder. So you have to see there's a little button beside folder that allows me to browse through my computer and find a folder where I've saved my you know letters. And now this is where you've got like, I have the letter A, P-E-S. And it could be any embroidery format that you've purchased, um, but whatever format that is, it'll display in the window here. So you can see it's A, B, C, D, etc. And if I scroll through the images, there's the uppercase letters, there's Roman numerals, there's lowercase letters. And if I scroll down, there's even other letter styles in here because this is simply a folder on my computer where I have saved a bunch of designs that were made up of letters. Now, if I want to, um, I'm just going to quickly scroll back up to the top of this list. Now I can click and drag to put the letters over on the left are the empty spaces where you need to associate the embroidery designs with the keystrokes on your keyboard. And so there's your letter A and your letter B, etc. And you can drag them in one at a time. But if they if they come to you organized, and most people that create fonts will save them in a way so that they come up A, B, C, D, etc. And so if they are in that way, you can use these buttons to help map them kind of quickly. So notice I've selected the letter A. I'm just going to scroll down through the letters and, and get to the letter Z and hold down shift and click. So I selected everything from the letter A to the letter Z in the capitals. And I'll say map capital A to capital Z. And so the software asks a question. Since you haven't added any letters to your font yet, which letter would you like to be the reference letter? And it's suggesting M would be set as the reference letter. And so if I say yes, then simply the software uses the reference letter as the sort of like default size of the font. And of course, you can change that later and a little bit more about changing the size of your fonts towards the end of this video. But the point here is um, once these letters are done kind of importing here, you'll notice that it picks up the size of the letter M and makes that the, uh, the default size of my font. Now, if you want, you can click here to take control of that and say, instead of the default size of the letters being 39, I could make it be 50 or whatever number you want. If I had set my rulers to inches, then that would display an inches. And so whenever I come up, um, so now that I've got that sort of all pre-selected and I have my uppercase letters, we could be done and save the font. Or if you want to keep going, then you could scroll down further 
Um, there's the Roman numerals. We could do those. I'll, I'll come back to those and I'll do the lowercase letters. So there's the letter A and just scrolling through looking for the end. There's the Z. Hold shift. So now I've selected all the lowercase A to Z and I'll just click here to map those letters as well. Now when it's done mapping the lowercase letters we can talk about the numbers because there's a button for 0 to 9 and most fonts will have a 0 to a 9. But this particular one that I'm looking at um, that I'm adding actually had Roman numerals and so I had to kind of think about it a little bit because there wasn't um, I'll show you as I scroll through so let's scroll back up so here's the Roman numerals and so there's like a 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 well the button was 0 to 9 so 1 to 10 doesn't kind of exactly match that so what I can do instead is I can just use the um, scroll on the side of the keystrokes to find the numbers. So some of this is like your um, European characters and symbols. If you had, you know, built a font that had, you know, little special Asantegu type things, then you could assign those as well. Here's the zero and the one and the two and the three. And so rather than using the button to auto assign it, I'll just manually. So there's the one, drag it onto the one and two and drag that onto two drag three so it doesn't take long to build a font in this way um notice here let's just move this down so i can see the rest of the numbers so there's four five and i'm just going to bring these all in and then um talk about what to do about the number 10 because the font came with like one to ten but the keystrokes on the keyboard were like 0 to 9, and so I got this 10. Normally with the regular letters, you'd type 1 and then the 0, but in this case, um, I actually have a Roman numeral for 10, and I don't have a Roman numeral for 0. So what I could maybe do is just put the 10 into the 0 spot. So in this case, I kind of have to know that, or maybe you want to take a note of it for you know to remember it. But the idea is um, if you type in 0, you will get 10 because we decided. Um, so I'm going to click Save. And this will we've now created a font. It's called Trevor, uh, Trevor's Letters. And if I want to use it, so notice um, I actually have the same font that I've created before, but it was called Christmas Letters or something like that. So if I want to switch to, you know, obviously any font, you know that you can just scroll through here and click to choose the fonts. And so if I scroll down to, it's because it's alphanumerical, to the letter T for Trevor's Letters, we should find um, somewhere in here Trev's Letters right there. And when I see when I hover over it, it kind of shows us what it looks like. And so, um, and I'm going to click on it and click apply. And almost everything is perfect. Only I want to point out that the letter P in importer is a little bit funny because the letter P is a, a lowercase letter P should be below the baseline, right? The D, it's a descender. So we didn't take note of that when we built it. So if we go back tools font importer it won't take long to fix this up so what we'll do is we'll select the font so it's called trev's letters and so i just select from the list and it gives us all our um, characters that we've created and um so i'll just be patient for it it's coming You know what I always say about that little blue wheel spinning? When the blue wheel is spinning, it's not a good time to start clicking. Just be patient. The information is coming. Um, if you do start clicking when the blue spinning wheel is spinning, the software may put a little note at the top of the screen that says not responding, but that's only partially true. It will respond once it's done working on whatever you asked for. And if you keep clicking, it, you can actually just confuse the whole program and make it crash. So keep that in mind. A little patience goes a long way. Okay, we're ready to go here now. Um, notice if I scroll down, all of the lowercase letters that had descenders it was not automatically picked up um, so what you can do is just select that letter and then click and drag to bring the letter to you know visually wherever you want up and down and then once it looks good you you do have the ability to use like small little arrows to incrementally do it you know a specific amount um, but i usually just do it visually and it doesn't take much time you can sort of scroll through and say okay well there's the p so let's bring the p down and make sure that sits and so the blue line it, it puts a box around all of the letters that was the reference box and so you can kind of see 
where your design sits within that reference box and you can um, us make it you know up and down and really fine tune the letters to be exactly how you want them to and i think so once i get through there was just the four of them um, i can click save and so now my font is kind of perfect and i'm ready to go and we could enjoy it for kind of years to come now once i saved that font notice that it didn't immediately update my embroidery design um, it won't update the embroidery design unless you cause it to update. So for example, if I come over to the properties box and I select the font or just even click apply, you know, you don't have to change the font or anything to get it to happen. You just have to say apply to get it to regenerate the, you know, the letters, the stitching. And now that's all kind of fixed up and you can see. So the one thing that the font importer didn't seem to have a setting for was the lines um, spacing, you know, in between different lines. And that's a property that you pick up in your properties box. And you can come in here and put in however much you want. I'll put in 50. It's, it's based on percent. So 50 meaning half the height of the letter F will be kind of how much space goes in between my two words and so if that's too much you can obviously change that but the idea is that i created this font from individual letters that were purchased and now it's very easy to type in you know extra letters and it will automatically fetch them for you and so now it'll be font importers um okay so one more thing before i let you go for today um under the tools drop down menu for font importer uh, the last option that we didn't really talk about was called convert to outlines. And what this will do, as you know, if you haven't already learned, this is something that you should learn about. It's what does this mean, convert to outlines? And as you know, choosing converts to outlines allows the software to read the, the original stitches, create shapes from them, and then it can use those shapes to generate new stitches. And so I say use this tool with caution because you really need to understand fully what it does and what it can do to really be able to um, get the best results. And what I'm really trying to say is if you purchased a font and it has a lot of times fonts when they're purchased, they'll come with multiple sizes. They'll sell you the one inch size and the two inch size and the three inch size that might be all in your little zip. You unzip it. And now you've got all the letters for the one inch size. I recommend making the one inch size and then making the two inch size because if you don't check this off, then you can always assure that the letters that you stitch will stitch exactly like the original embroidery designs that you purchased with very little to no changes made. But if you choose convert to outlines um, and then you, you know, use that to make big size changes, then the software will be generating new stitches based upon, you know, the original shapes that it made. And you're no longer stitching the stitches that you bought from the designer is all I'm saying. And so it, it, does, it comes, it works great, but you need to have some understanding of how it works. And therefore the understanding is of the, I guess, pitfalls that can come with using a tool like that. Uh, my recommendation is create the one inch size, create the two inch size, create the three inch size, whatever sizes they made. Because if you thought you could just take the one inch size and choose convert to outlines and then, you know, instantly be able to use it at a four inch size, what you'll find is that there are things that do come up that might require further editing and it's just a little bit more learning involved. And so um, if they've already made a one inch and a two inch and a three inch and a four inch, those you can under assure that the original designer has already taken the time to make sure that they work at those multiple sizes. And so that's, I wanted to point that out. There is an option for this, but I don't recommend using it unless you fully understand what you're doing. It's better just to stick to the original designs that the original designer made. And so this one that I made was made from a bunch of PES files. And although I can use it like a font, I can right click, I can go into edit, I can use this to, you know, move the lettering spacing, I can add what's known as enveloping to the fonts and change their shapes like this, um, just like I could a font that I purchased. But when I make drastic size changes, it won't necessarily change the stitches drastically. And so normally when we take a design and we make, you know, a large size change with a pre-built in font, they're, they're made from artwork. And so let's understand that when we make fonts from letters, from, from stitches, they're still based upon stitches. And so they're not as 
sort of scalable. You know, if you've got a font and it was originally this size and you want to bring it in and make it 10%, 20% bigger or smaller, you can expect that'll work very well. But what I'm saying is if you bring in a font and it was originally meant to be a two inch font and you think that you can come in here and say, well, I'm just going to make it four inches and click apply, that you may end up with some sort of gaps in between the stitches because it's going to create some extra long stitching, I guess is really the end of it. Um, in this case, it's made long satin stitches that are showing as missing. Um, total side note, because this is not about the font importer, it's simply the way the software displays long stitches. So if you don't know, when you're making a satin stitch and it gets longer than, and if I do it in metric, it's the number is 12 millimeters. As soon as it's longer than 12, the software creates and puts jumps in between. And on a typical home machine, that, that doesn't work out. It's In other words, those stitches are too long to sew well. And so that's what I was saying was the font was originally decided, you know, designed at a certain size and it's not going to be as scalable as the ones that come with the software or the ones that maybe you create yourself based upon artwork shapes. But the good news is if you are buying fonts and I know there's a lot of great, you know, resources where you can purchase embroidery letter styles. But what you're really buying is the letter A and the letter B in some kind of embroidery format could be PES, could be Jeff whatever it is you can easily map those into a font and that allows you to you know pull you know start a new letter style at any time and you know type in new letters from your new font that's called trev's letters and so i hope you enjoyed today's video about the font importer and until next week i hope you have a wonderful day thanks for listening and bye for now